Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today, I am so excited to bring you my top 12 projects using Jenga blocks or tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. Most of these if not all of these projects you can make using one or the other. I hope you really enjoy these ideas. They were a lot of fun to put together. If you've been on my channel for very long, you know I love to create projects, DIYs for my home with wood. And so that's why I wanted to bring you this video today. If you are new to my channel today and you love home decor on a budget, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And again, if you hit the bell when it appears, YouTube should notify you whenever I upload new videos based on the preference you choose in the drop down menu. With all that being said, let's get into today's DIYs. First DIY is going to be some pinwheel style lanterns using Jenga blocks and three different colors of chalk paint along with wood glue. So here I am using actual Jenga blocks that I picked up at a thrift store. I'll be using 60 blocks total to make one large lantern and two small lanterns. I'm going to give all my blocks a coat of truffle chalk paint, mostly to cover up the word Jenga. So here is all my blocks. Now using wood glue, I'm going to make four pieces in this shape. You might call them a rainbow, an upside down U, but I'm gonna do two blocks on the left, two blocks on the right, and then three blocks across the top. So again, for our large lantern, we're going to do this four times. So here's all those pieces. Now I'm just arranging the sticks of two and three into our four upside down U's. So like I said, we'll do four of those for a large lantern and four smaller ones for the small lantern with one on each side and two across the top. Now to put these together, this is where I, they kind of remind me of a pinwheel. So you can see the backwards C on the right here that I'm putting some glue on. You're going to attach that to the first one on the side right at the center there where the two blocks are coming together. You can see the little crack between. Then we're going to take piece number three and do the same thing. Piece number four is going to complete that little pinwheel at the top and you'll see that there's kind of a square cut out there at the top when all four pieces are glued together. Now for our smaller lanterns, like I said, we're doing two across the top and just one block on either side. So when we glue those backwards C's together, we're just going to line them up at the middle there, left, up, right, and then that last piece will be coming down towards the center. So you see kind of like a plus sign there in the middle rather than a square. So here's our large lantern all dry. And I did take some sandpaper and kind of rough those up a little bit. Then I decided to weather my pieces by dry brushing some mineral chalk paint and then dry brushing some white chalk paint to get that final look. Now I'm using two small jars and one large jar to go into my lanterns. My large jar I'm gonna go around with nautical rope and my two small jars I'm gluing jute twine around the top. And so this is what our pinwheel lanterns look like with the empty jars. 
And then you'll see you can put some rocks and some candles in them as well. I love these. I have them out on my coffee table. DIY number two, we're gonna make a simple set of coasters using the tumbling tower blocks and some wood glue. I'm not gonna paint these, but you definitely could paint them if you wanted something other than the plain wood. So for each coaster, we're going to use eight blocks in a square like this. So the first thing we have to do is we need to glue our pairs together. So we're going to glue four pairs for each coaster and we'll let those dry. For our holder, we're going to glue together two rows of six blocks and let those dry as well. Coming back to our pairs for our coasters, now we will glue the pairs together in that square, kind of, kind of like the pinwheels for the lanterns, but um, now we're gonna glue this one on the top, going to the right, and then that last piece will fill in the square. We're gonna do this for all four of our coasters. You probably could fit mm, five or six coasters in this holder that we're going to make. Those two rows of six are now glued together. And then with our eight individual blocks, we're gonna glue two on each corner like this. And this is what will hold our coasters in the holder. So all four corners will get those. Like I said, I did not paint my coasters, but I did give them a coat of matte finish Mod Podge just to make them a little bit more water resistant. And here they are sitting in the holder, one being used by a mug. And I just think these are so cute and simple. Something small you can make with the tumbling tower blocks. For our third project, we are making a round farmhouse pedestal using tumbling tower blocks, some chalk paint. I'm using two of these round ornament signs. You could also use the summer signs that are in a circle shape um, that are out right now. We're gonna use some jars, rocks, rope, and greenery. So the first thing I did after removing the metal from our ornament signs is I clamped them together, um, not perfectly matching. So you can see the little ornament part is sticking up and then using the other circle, I took my craft knife and cut those off. Then I'm just going to hot glue my two circles together um, with the images on the inside. Clamp them together until they are completely dried. Now this is back when I had some brown tumbling tower blocks. I'm taking 36 of those and I'm going to paint them black. Then I'm taking 45 of the plain ones and I'm going to use the antique wax. I just love how this brings out the wood grain. So just brush it on and wipe off the excess and do that until they're all painted and all dried. Now that our circles are glued together, I am going to give top and bottom two coats of our white chalk paint. Now using our 45 antique waxed blocks, I'm going to take 15 of them and go around in a circle and glue those down. Then taking my next 15, you can see I'm gonna glue them kind of in the middle to make a second layer, then a third layer, kind of like a brick wall, I would say. And I love how that looks. Now with my black blocks, I'm going to glue these together in 18 pairs, and I'm gluing them together here like little sandwich cookies and letting those dry. And then flipping over our pedestal, we're going to take five of those pairs and we're just going to glue them in a line going right down the center of the bottom of our circle here. Some of them were a little bit um, not even, so that's why you'll see me trading out pairs here and there. But once we have the five that are the flattest, we're going to go ahead and glue those down straight down the circle. Then I'm gonna take two more going out to the right and two more out to the left and glue those. These are just gonna be like the stand for our pedestal to raise it up. So glue those nine, then nine more pairs to make it two layers deep, you can see. Taking some nautical rope, I'm gonna go all the way around where my two circles join together just to cover up that crack. 
And then you can just style this pedestal however you want. You can use it to display seasonal items or just everyday greenery, rocks, candles like this. Project number four, I'm going to make a set of three wood pillar candle stands using the tumbling tower blocks, again the antique wax, and some wood glue. I did use 216 blocks for this project. It did take some time to let the glue dry between steps, but I absolutely love how these turned out. So here I show myself gluing together six sets of six. I actually need 12. And then I'm going to make three different heights of candle holders. So I have four sets of eight, four sets of 12, and four sets of 16. Then there's my 12 sets of six, which will be the tops and bottoms of our pillar candle holders, candle stands. Once everything was dry, I did take the time to do the antique wax. And I really think it is a good use of time because I just think it elevates the finished product so much. All right, so here's those 12 sets of six. I'm now gluing two sets together to make almost a square. And these will be the top and bottom of each of our stands. All right, here are my four sets of eight. What I'm going to do is basically we're going to make like a tube. So gluing two sets together in an L shape, we're gonna do that twice until those are dry. Here's my set that has 12 and that piece broke, not a big deal, just to re-glue it. We're gonna make two L shapes that are 12 blocks long and then two L shapes that are 16 blocks long. Once those are dry, put some glue along this bottom front edge and then we're going to flip this top one around to complete the rectangle. You can see here, we're making a tube that is 16 blocks tall. And we'll do that for the 12 blocks tall. Gluing it together, flipping it around and completing that tube. And then we'll also do it for the eight blocks tall. Once all of our tubes are dry, I did sand them down a little bit just to make sure they were as flat as possible on both ends. Go ahead and put some wood glue and then we're going to glue that down to one of our squares getting it as close to the center as possible. We'll do this for all three of our tubes and let those dry completely. Once they're dry, we'll put glue on the other end of the tube and flip it over to center it on the base as evenly as we possibly can. And that's our pillars. Now you can leave them plain if you'd like. I had this berry garland in my stash from last fall. It's got white and green berries on this brown wire. And I decided just to add it to my pillars by wrapping it a few times around each one. I did not glue it in case I wanted to remove it and maybe change it out. So here's all three pillars with the berry garland and here they are with just some battery powered pillar candles. I am in love with these. I just think they're so cute in farmhouse and really I made them for like $3 plus wood glue and the antique wax. Our fifth project is a lattice glass candle vase using two of these sizes of cylinder vases, some candles and the tumbling tower blocks and wood glue. So each layer is going to have five tumbling tower blocks. You can see I'm starting against the bottom here. I'm putting the blocks on their skinnier side right up against the glass and spacing five of them as evenly as I possibly can. So they're touching the vase right at the center of the block. Then taking some glue, you can see I'm joining the two blocks that are next to each other with one on top centering that again so you're just going to continue this kind of like i did for the round pedestal riser and just keep going layer by layer five blocks on each layer 
Then once you get all the way up to the top, you can decide to stop there or go ahead and do one more layer so it's a little bit taller than the glass vase. I did make two of these, one of the taller ones and one of the shorter ones. I did leave them the plain wood. You could stain them or paint them if you want, but I love how these turned out. I just have one of those tap lights in each one, and I think these are super cute and would make a great gift. DIY number six, we're making a crisscross plant hanger. This time I'm using actual Jenga blocks, but again, you could use tumbling tower blocks. We're going to use 24 blocks for this project, and I decided to paint the blocks black, again, to cover up the imprinted word Jenga and just add some color this time. Once the paint was dry, I am going to now glue these 24 blocks into 12 pairs and let those dry as well. And then I decided to dry brush them with some white chalk paint. Again, adding some of that rustic farmhouse look to the project. Once all of our paint was dry, I am going to kind of build these like a Lincoln Log house. I have my bottom two pairs one, uh, three and a quarter inches apart and then I'm doing the same so each layer here my second or my third and fourth blocks are also three and a quarter inches apart I let that layer dry for a couple minutes before adding the next two blocks and I'm going to keep doing this sides top and bottom sides top and bottom sides top and bottom until we've used all 12 of our pairs of blocks and here's what it looks like when it's all done then taking some jute twine we're going to tie four knots four strings around that top layer there so just go ahead and loop it through tie a knot cut off the excess and then we're going to leave quite a bit of length of jute twine before we cut it to do the second third and fourth sides then taking those four strings, we're going to tie them all together in a knot at the top. And then you can set a pot or here's an Ikea plant in the center there and hang this up using an S hook. And you've made a really inexpensive, super cute hanging plant holder. For DIY number seven, we are making a placemat wreath using tumbling tower blocks, a wreath form, the placemat, and some of the white nautical rope. Now, I have this wreath form facing down, and that second ring is touching the placemat. So that's what I traced, and we're going to go ahead and cut out that circle from our placemat. Now taking 48 of our tumbling tower blocks, I'm going to use my antique wax on those, brushing it on and wiping off the excess. We're going to be adding these to our wreath for a farmhouse look. Tracing that second ring again of our wreath form onto some foam board, I went ahead and cut out a circle the same size as the placemat just to give some more stability to the back of our project. Then just glue that placemat circle right onto the foam board circle and you're good to go. Then go around with some hot glue on the very edge there and we are going to glue that wreath form down, face down onto that circle. Now you'll also notice I did spray paint my wreath form white instead of the green. Now I was able to glue eight of these tumbling tower blocks in each of the sections of the wreath form. You can see I'm, I'm gluing it to the middle two rings of the wreath form and that's what it looks like going all the way around. Now for this gap here on the outside, I glued in some of the white cotton nautical rope all the way around and then I did also use it on the inside of the tumbling tower blocks so that it would hide that piece of the wreath form that you could see there, that white wire. So I did have to file a couple of the blocks to get them to fit, but I was really happy with how the blocks fit. 
eight blocks in each of the six sections of the wreath form. DIY number eight, we're going to make a simple hanging frame sign using tumbling tower blocks, an image of your choice. I'm using the lemons and some ribbon. I'm gonna need two sets of four, six sets of three, and two sets of two. This is just for the size I decided to make, but you could make this project any size you'd like. Go ahead and glue all those sets together, and then once they're dry, I decided to go with black for this frame. I think because the frame for the lemon image was black and I liked how that looked. Now I'm gonna take two sets of three and now that they're dry, I'm gonna glue two of those together. So now I'm making six on the left here and two more sets of three to make six on the right. And then I have I believe it's a set of four on the top and on the bottom. Once those are dry, we'll go ahead and glue them in a rectangle like you've seen me do already a few times in this video. Overlapping now here on the top and then this last piece of six will fit in on that right hand side. Then we'll make a smaller rectangle using the rest of our pieces. We've got three on the left two on the top, three on the right, and two on the bottom to make our inside rectangle. Now using that smaller rectangle, we're going to decide which part of the image we wanna use and then go ahead and trace around the rectangle frame and then cut out the image slightly smaller than we traced it and we'll go ahead and we'll glue that to the back of the frame. I did add a few craft sticks to the back of our large rectangle just for some more stability. If you don't like that they're not black, you could go ahead and paint those so they blend in a little bit better. And here's our large rectangle and our smaller image one that'll go in the center. Now using some of this cork ribbon, I'm gonna cut two lengths that will attach to the back of the lemon image up and around the larger frame and then back again on the back of this smaller one. So here we're gonna just glue the end to the back here and then once that's dry, we will loop it around the larger rectangle and then attach it again to itself. And here's the finished product. Just using a few tumbling tower blocks, you could display any image or picture you'd like this way. For project number nine, we are using two large signs from Dollar Tree, a small embroidery hoop, and some tumbling tower blocks to make this home sign. Now, I really liked the images of these trucks, so I did take a few minutes to carefully peel the paper image off the front so I could save those for another DIY. I loved that summer truck and also the spring one. Then using the backs of my signs, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the holes where the hangers were and let that dry. Now I'm going to use 10 sets of three blocks. So we're just using hot glue to glue those together and then we will be set. These are actually going to be used for the frame. Then I'm gonna use 23 blocks plus a half block that I'm painting black. These I'm going to use to make the letters H, M, and E for my sign. This medium size embroidery hoop we're also painting black. This will be the O for our sign. Once I had attached these two signs together with large craft sticks, I also put some spackle down the center to cover up that crack. Coming back to my 10 sets of three, we're using antique wax on these, brushing it on and wiping off the excess. Our base of our sign, we're going to use white chalk paint. So go ahead and give that a couple coats so it's completely covered. Then I'm gonna take some hot glue and I'm going to hot glue my sticks 
of blocks that are painted the antique wax all the way around my sign to create a nice wooden frame. Then you can see here I took the black tumbling tower blocks and arranged them on their skinnier sides so the letters were nice and skinny and I created H, M, and E and then had, like I said, the embroidery hoop for the letter O. You could add florals or greenery to this but I just liked how nice and modern farmhouse it looked with just the clean black, white, and then antique wax wood frame. DIY number 10, we're going to make a stand and then also some word blocks. Our stand will be made with the tumbling tower blocks. So I have seven of these wood cubes. I got it at a thrift store, but you can get them at Dollar Tree. I'm going to start by painting them all black on all six sides of each block. Then I'm going to take 21 tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to wood glue them together in sets of three. I just do this so that it's a little easier to keep them straight. Then I'm gonna take seven more and glue them together in a long line like this. We're gonna let all of that dry completely and then we'll take our seven sets of three and glue those together. So now we have a platform that is 21 blocks long. Then we'll take our seven that are in a line and glue that to the back just to kind of make our platform a little bit wider. Now I wanted my blocks to say welcome on one side and hello on the other. So I printed out and then trimmed all those letters and I trimmed them so they're a little bit smaller than the blocks so you could see that nice black outline. So here's hello, then we move some around, flip a couple over and now it says welcome attach the paper with Mod Podge and then put another layer of Mod Podge on top. Then I used a few of these little wood plugs. You could use the wood cubes from Dollar Tree. This is just to raise our little platform up a tiny bit. Then I added this 12 inch wood dowel to the back so that the blocks would not fall off the platform at the back. And once all of that was dry, I decided to use some antique wax and brushed that on the entire project and wiped off the excess. And here's the finished product. You can see just that little tumbling tower block stand with those block letters are so cute and so farmhouse. I love that you can make these things so inexpensively with items from Dollar Tree. For project number 11, we're again going to use some tumbling tower blocks along with some pieces of paint stick, some salt shakers, florals, and Mod Podge and paint. So here I have two pairs of blocks and then 14 blocks that I'm again gluing together in sets of three that we're just going to let those dry to put together the base of our box. Now taking these three salt shakers, I am going to put a layer of Mod Podge on them first I just feel like they take the paint a little bit better when they have that Mod Podge on them. I wanted a light yellow, so I'm going to mix maize chalk paint with a little bit of plaster. And I really liked the soft yellow that this gave. And I'm going to paint this on each of my salt shakers, just one coat. Coming back to my 14 tumbling tower blocks, now I can glue those sets together to make my 14 block long piece. And then I have those two pairs on the sides. We're going to go ahead and glue those on the ends coming up. So you'll see there'll be kind of like the short ends of our box here that we're making. This pair on the left and on the right. And then once that is dry, we'll take these two pieces of paint stick and those will be the long sides of our box. You 
You could definitely leave your box the plain wood color. I decided to go ahead and paint mine with the white chalk paint once everything was dry. And I did paint everything on the outside and the inside of the box. Then I decided to use one of my stencils from a maker studio and just add this word simplicity with the black chalk art ink. Coming back to our salt shakers, the paint is now dry. I did go over them again with Mod Podge and then take some jute twine to wrap around the top part of each of our three salt shaker bud vases. They fit nice and spread out there in the box. You probably could add a fourth if you wanted. Then I took some of these little lavender picks from Dollar Tree and added them in to the vases and I just love this. I actually have sold quite a few of these and plan to make more for Christmas time. Our last project for this video was a labor of love, this lattice sign that I made with a cross and a wreath. I'm going to use quite a few tumbling tower blocks, 148 for this project. The frame of our square here you'll see is pairs of tumbling tower blocks. So that's what I'm doing. I have eight pairs on each side. And then once those are dry, I'm gluing those eight pairs together. This is the left side of our square and we'll do that on all four sides. Next, I'm gonna make five sticks of eight blocks, gluing them end to end like this. And we'll do that five times until they're all dry. And then we'll also have 42 blocks that are just going to be single blocks that we'll use to fill in um, the spaces between our long sticks of eight. Now our frame pieces, the eight pairs, I'm going to use antique wax on those. I just love using that for the frame. And then everything else we're going to paint white. So that'll be our five sticks of eight blocks and our 42 individual blocks. These are all the blocks that are gonna be the inside of our sign. So here's everything painted and drying and ready to be put together. The first thing I put together is the square frame using the pairs of blocks that are antique wax. And then once that's done, you'll see I'm taking seven of the individual blocks and I'm gluing them right where two pairs meet. You can see that little crack. That's what I'm lining them up on. Then I'm gluing in a stick of eight. Then I'll do seven more individual blocks and then another stick of eight to the right of that. Seven blocks, a stick of eight, all the way until we get to these last seven blocks to fill in this last space between the white stick of eight and the frame, the right side of our frame. So this did take a while, but I loved how it turned out. This is a very sturdy, substantial piece. So you could definitely make this seasonal, um, change out things to add for each season. I made this originally around Easter time, so I wanted to make this paint stick cross that said amazing going down and grace going across, sharing that one A. I did not have a C, so I just took an O and cut a little piece out of it and voila, I had a C. Use some Mod Podge to make sure those stay down and then just hot glue your cross together. The last thing I made for this project was a greenery wreath and I'm using an embroidery hoop for the base of it some of this Hobby Lobby eucalyptus greenery, cutting all these individual pieces. And then I'm just hot gluing pieces one at a time around the hoop. Some of them point in, some point out until you get it filled how you like it to look. And this is my finished look of my wreath. So I did take some jute twine and hang the wreath around the top of my latticework sign here. And then I just kind of tucked the cross into 
the in-between space there so it's not attached to the sign or to the wreath. And here is what the finished project looks like with just the wreath and with the cross and the wreath together. Again, thank you all so much for joining me here today. I'm always so encouraged by your comments on all of my videos. They really do encourage me and keep me going, keeping me motivated to bring you each and every DIY video. Please be sure to comment on this video and let me know which of these projects was your favorite. See you next time. Bye.